Exactly. And also, I am not visible. You know, I have maybe, I don't know, 100 followers here, 50 followers there. And uh, I think this whole thing needs to be a little bit um, better. Yeah. How do you say represented? And, and, and also, I am, you know, when I switched to Linux, it was a special phase in my life. I also basically um, destroyed all my social media accounts. I only kept like Reddit because I use it often to just look up things or discuss things. And I kept Instagram because that was the, the most easiest way to connect to people. And other than that, I'm not present. I have no accounts, you know, I'm not on Facebook and not on X. And yeah, so it's kind of difficult, but that's what I want to do. Actually, I want to reach more people so that they maybe on one end want to try Linux to, for music making and on the other end to, to motivate the developers to actually do to, you know, to tick the box so that they make Linux builds. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a right now a lot of push for you know people in the gaming space, people in general computing, all of this stuff to swap to Linux. But I don't really hear much from the music production side. And maybe I know you were saying you were using Mac before. Maybe you have some more opinions on this. Why is it that people tend to gravitate from what I can see towards the Mac side? Like what is what is being offered there that people seem to want? Hmm. Well, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I think Mac always gives the, the impression that it's going to be simple. You know, you, you buy the MacBook, the operation system is already on there. Um, everything is more or less done for you. Nowadays, you have like broad support, like all the tools that you could, could want, they, they probably run on Mac. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think there is this, even though I, I think it's probably not true, but I think many people have this conception that Mac OS is, is the, the industry standard, mm. you know, like if you have a Mac and you go to a studio, you will have no problems. That's always also one of the questions I ask the Linux musicians, do you encounter any issues because of you maybe running into a, into a studio with your Linux computer mm. and all of them say no, no issues at all, you know, um, mm -hmm. but, um, I think that's probably the reason, yeah. Mm, mm. No, I can definitely, I can definitely understand that. The, especially if you're not someone who wants to deal with a computer, you use a, a computer as a tool rather than you're interested in the computer itself, right? Like the, there's this expectation on Linux that you generally have some interest in, you know, customizing the system, customizing your desktop, things like this, but if your entire goal is to use it like an appliance, I can certainly see why you'd want to go with the thing that everyone kind of just says works, so you don't really have to worry about it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's also something, you know, I recently wrote a guide how to start with music production on Linux, and mm -hmm. I realized that I am now knee deep into this venture. And for me, it's, it seems very simple. You can mm -hmm. have that Mac-like experience with Linux, no problem. But in the beginning, when you when you start to learn about Linux, like uh, the question is always what distro, what desktop environment, you know, and what is Hyperland? Should I try mm -hmm. Hyperland and stuff? Like, I think in the beginning it can just be um, very overwhelming. And I, and I also I hear a lot people say that um, the Linux adoption would become bigger if actually more devices would ship with Linux. And I agree um, that this whole first little phase where you have to read a little bit and learn a little bit um, about Linux before you can actually start is, I think, for many people already overwhelming enough that they don't try it. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned earlier plugins and how people kind of rely on these plugins. I don't know anything about music production at all. So why is there such a desire to have all of these plugins available? So I think there are certain things like, you know, like for instance, audio restoration, where you need certain like tools that are really highly developed and specialized on certain tasks. Mm. For instance, where you can um, remove artifacts from audio or denoise audio, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all these things like that, that are really specialized that you don't have as a standard toolkit in your DAW. Mm -hmm. But then I think the much larger as like the, the much larger part of this is just um, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Like many of the tools that are super successful, like uh, plugins, it's basically just a nice shell, a nice workflow to do something that you could actually do without the plugin, if mm -hmm. you're very honest. So, 
And that's also what I did in the beginning when I switched to Linux. I just said, okay, now let's just use the things that come out of the box. And I actually seldomly came into a situation where I realized like, ah, oh, shit, now I don't have that on Linux. I cannot do it. But it's these two things. And, and I, I, I think, yeah, there are still certain things that are really missing on Linux. Mm -hmm. um, like in this like post-production audio um, restoration editing professional tool stuff but then again i mean there's so many also open source stuff there's for instance the the linux studio project um where you have a ton of plugins that are really highly developed and of course it's like so often no, in in linux and open source that you have to be willing to go that route like for instance I also do a lot of graphic design and web development and stuff. And there, there are on Mac, again, there are apps that are like so polished that when you come to an open source alternative, like let's take, for instance, Adobe Illustrator, and then you come to Inkscape in the beginning, you think like, oh man, everything is so cumbersome. Before this took two clicks, now it's like five clicks. But after a while, you really fall in love with these tools and you learn to, to um, uh, value them and, and then on top, that was something that was really important for me, this experience. Like I, you know, I had a company in Switzerland for 25 years where we did web development. So we used a lot of open source stuff and we were used to, you know, report box, mm -hmm. get like are in a conversation with the developers and then get the fix. And for instance, on Mac OS, I can tell you like, like maybe 10 years there were some really annoying bugs mm. and you could report them over and over. You would not get any feedback. You would not know what's going on. It was really frustrating. Mm -hmm. And when I started to use Linux and I started to report bugs and then all of a sudden I felt like, oh my God, that's so amazing. Now I talk to the people who are actually making the software mm -hmm. and they ask me questions and I help to fix it. And even maybe I'm not a developer, you know, but maybe I make some nice graphics and commit them to the project and then they're eventually even used. It's like, it's almost like growing your own tomatoes. It's just an experience you have to, I don't know, you have to go through in, other, in order to understand it. Yeah, it's really beautiful.